Okay, now let us look at the topic of heat capacity and specific heat capacity. This is on page 136 on the prescribed textbook. And when we have completed this lesson, you will understand, you will be able to explain the concepts of heat and specific heat capacity. You will be able to calculate heat gained or lost using the formula 2 is equals to mc delta t. Okay, so let's go for it. Now, we must be able to define heat capacity and specific heat capacity and don't, not be, uh, don't mix them up. They are different. What is heat capacity? Heat capacity is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of the complete substance by one degree. So you've got a complete substance here. It doesn't matter how much it is. You want to raise its temperature just by one degree. So say from 20 degrees to 21 degrees, you just want to raise it by one degree. You don't want to bring it to a boiling point. So you're going to need an amount of heat energy to do that. And the amount of heat energy required to do that is called heat capacity. So that is heat capacity, is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of the complete substance by one degree. And what is specific heat capacity? Specific heat capacity is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of one kilogram of a substance by one degree. So the main difference between heat capacity and specific heat capacity is that specific heat capacity is specific to one kilogram of a substance, whereas heat capacity refer, refers to a process whereby there's an amount of heat energy requires to raise the temperature of the complete substance by one degree. But for specific heat capacity, you are specific to one kilogram of that substance. Okay. So the symbol we use for specific heat capacity is the symbol C. So don't confuse these two, heat capacity and specific heat capacity. Then we're going to look at the three factors that determine how much heat a substance can absorb or can give away. We're going to look at the mass of the, uh, we're going to look at those factors. And the uh, uh, heat that can be absorbed or given away is called the sensible heat. So sensible heat is heat that can be gained or lost. Those three factors are the mass, the specific heat capacity, as well as the change in temperature. So those are the three factors that will determine how much heat energy a substance can absorb or give away. Okay, so we said there are three factors that will determine sensible heat the mass, the specific heat capacity, and the change in temperature. Now, just to explain briefly, if you have two containers of water, the one is 5 liter and the one is 2 liter, 2 liters. If you take the water and you expose them to heat, uh, let's say you want them to boil, which one will boil quicker? We know that the 2 liters will boil quicker compared to the 5 liters because the two liters just need a small amount of heat energy and it's ready to boil. But the two liters will need to absorb uh, uh, two, two and a half times as much heat to get to the boiling point. Okay, and then the specific heat capacity. We said that the specific heat capacity is the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of a substance by of a one of one kilogram of a substance by one degree now substances differ in specific heat capacities they have different values okay when you get to n3 they will show you a table of substances where they measured because it's a constant value you can take one kilogram of a substance raise its temperature by one degree then you'll measure how much heat energy you used to do to do that and that will be the constant value of the specific heat capacity for that substance Okay, a general example that will help us to understand specific heat capacity will be if we compare water and milk. If you put water in the microwave with an attempt to boil it, it's going to take a while. That is why we don't use the microwave to boil water. But if you take milk and you put it in the microwave, 
you must make sure your settings are correct otherwise before you know it the milk bubbles all up and you open the microwave there's nothing it's all bubbles that is because water has a very high specific heat capacity it requires a lot of heat energy to raise the temperature of water compared to the amount of heat energy needed to raise the, uh, the temperature of the milk. So with a little bit of heat, the milk, the temperature of the milk will go up and up and then it will boil and bubble up. But water will absorb a whole lot of heat energy just to raise the temperature by one degree. And then we're going to look at the third one being the change in temperature. Okay, then we're going to look at the change in temperature. Change in temperature also will affect how much heat a substance will take in or will give away. So the change in temperature is basically the difference between the two temperatures that you will have. It will be the high temperature minus the low temperature. So the higher the change in temperature needed, the more heat energy will be absorbed. The smaller the temperature change needed, the smaller the temperature or the heat will be absorbed. So those are the three factors that determine how much heat energy a body will absorb or give away. It's the mass, the specific heat capacity, as well as the change in temperature. As you can see that these three factors they lead us to this formula that helps us to calculate heat energy. So Q being the heat energy is determined by the mass of the substance. So M is for the mass, C is for the specific heat capacity, and delta T is for the change in temperature. So these three, they will determine how much heat energy you have. So this takes us to the calculations then where we look at how we apply this formula to work out problems.